Good evening, I'm Colm Colgan, and you're watching the Business and Enterprise Show, Ireland's only web-based business TV program, watched by over 2 million people in 200 countries. And as always, we're coming to you live from the top of the town studios in downtown Cavan. My guest tonight is Pat Bradley, and Pat trades as Rocking Horse Ireland, where he makes bespoke rocking horses. Pat, you're very welcome. Thanks, Colm. Before we start hearing all about uh, Rocking Horse Ireland, you might tell me a little bit the man behind the brand, Pat Bradley. Well, Colm, I started uh, making them maybe nearly 18 years ago now. And uh, uh, for, uh, I started at a young age having a great interest in them uh, from seeing them on TV. And I always wanted to make one. Uh, having said that, uh, I never actually did any woodwork in, in school or anything like that. So self-taught? Yeah, I'm completely self-taught. And it, it was a long learning process. Uh, now, if you didn't do woodwork in yeah. school, have you a carpentry background? Or, no. You know, to go from, I've never done yeah. woodwork, and I did woodwork in school, yeah. but we cut our little squares out and put the things in and they yeah. never fitted. Yeah. Now, to be making the magnificent rocking horses you make, it, that's a hell of a leap. Yeah, uh, it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I always felt I could do it without ever having done it. And also, uh, I, 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 what I had to do was do a lot of research into it. And I looked at it in this way that uh, if you can pair a pencil, you're, you're actually shaping wood. So if, if, if you can do that, mm. you know, you can take it another step further yeah. and carve a rocking horse, you know, although it is a big leap. I was going to say that. Yeah, yeah, it, is, yeah. it is a hell of a leap. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it took me a long time and a lot of mistakes. Uh, but eventually I did turn out a couple of nice rocking horses. And actually, to be honest, I, 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 my second rocking horse I sold. I kept the first one, but so, uh, so from everyone. Your second good one, yeah, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah. Uh, I sold uh, mm. uh, the first one I kept for the kids and sold the second one. So from then on, each one has sold for me. Yeah. Now, when you say you never did woodwork in school, yeah. did you do it after that? Did you do a night class? Did you have somebody come yeah. in and show you the techniques? Yeah. Or was no. it just something you had in you? Yeah, I think I had it in me. Uh, it's just a feeling I had that I would, I would be able to do it without ever doing it. So uh, I studied a, a lot of books on it, uh, and I studied uh, a lot of books on how the old rocking horse makers made rocking horses in the 19th century and in the early 20th century. And what I basically did was I copied the basic template of that, but then worked in my own uh, additions such as uh, extra muscle definition and maybe different nicer mm. faces or and whatever. And when you say you researched, you obviously researched in the library. Yeah. Because if you started 18 years ago, the yeah. thing is Google to yeah, that's do it right. quick. How do you carve yeah. a rocking horse and yeah. get the ABCs? And yeah, yeah, it was basically a uh, uh, library and then buying several books. And uh, So there's books yeah, out reading on books. How to carve a rocking horse? Yeah. Or, well, how to carve wood, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Wo ba a lot of it was ba basic woodworking books because I had to learn basic woodworking skills, which I never learned as mm. well. So I had to learn all that. So it was basically trial and error, a lot of practice, a lot of, as I say, a lot of mistakes. Eventually got a, a nice uh, finished product. And and hopefully, ha I ha since then, I have improved and improved and improved, improved. on it. Now, you sold your, you kept your first one, you yeah. sold your second one. Mm -hmm. From the time you got the idea, do you know what? I think I'll make rocking horses. Yeah. Wh what, wh how, what time scale are we talking? Like, by the time you had mastered the art of yeah. doing it, how yeah. long did that take you? Uh, well, uh, as, as soon as I, uh, I knew how to do it, uh, I, they started to sell because I would do the local craft fairs, and that built on to doing the, the national... Christmas uh, d design and craft fair every year in the RDS. So, uh, yeah, so basically, from from the beginning, they were they were selling, mm. yeah, yeah, uh, at a different price bracket, yeah, than they are now. <laughs> so, you, you, when you say you, when when you first saw them on the late, late probably the late, late show toy show, yeah, yeah, uh, no, actually, it wasn't. Uh, it was way back in the days of Gay Bourne, and uh, he, he used to promote Irish craft. Yeah. And uh, uh, w one night I was just I was I was quite young at the time. I was just sitting watching it and he had a man on who made uh, a rocking horse out of solid wood. And 
it, it was at the time it was a thousand pounds, which was a hell of a lot of money. Yeah. But it was a beautiful piece of craft, mm. and I, uh, since that day, I just had a just a longing to 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 copy that. Yeah. 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 So handmade. Mm -hmm. Take us back to the, to be yeah. to, to the beginning. Raw material is, is yeah. it a block of wood and yeah. it planks of wood stuck yeah. together. Yeah. What what way does it work? Yeah. Well, uh, it's planks of wood, Colin, uh, and they have to be kiln dried to a certain moisture content because when the finished product is in a house, in a centrally heated home, you know the, the joints cannot open. Yeah. Uh, so the the timber has to be at the right moisture content. So. So I have to buy special timber in, but I use oak ash, beech, all the good hardwoods, cherry, uh, American cherry, English cherry. And uh, if they start in planks, I have a blueprint uh, template. I sketch it out. I glue it all together. Uh, so it's basically a big rectangular block with another block coming out and then four legs. So I have to start carving then. I start with a chainsaw. And I work down finer uh, to an angle grinder with wood carving discs attached. And I work down finer and finer to the gouges and chisels. I have to do that part with uh, the head with the, with the chisels because there's some fine yeah. carving to be done there. Uh, then it's finished with sanding, several, uh, several grits of sandpaper. Uh, so it's sanded down finer and finer and finer. And then I get several coats of finish. Uh, I usually stain the wood to a particular colour or I can copy uh, the markings on real horses so I would stain it down to the colour if somebody wanted a, uh, their own horse copied for example I could do that or I can paint on like a dapple grey finish so uh, you get a nice like a dappling colour into the horse mm. and then it's finished with a, a leather a leather saddle made that I have made specially by a, a saddle maker and then uh, it's fitted with real horse hair mane and tail, uh, a leather bridle, uh, it then it has stirrups fitted as well, and then it's mounted onto a, a safety glider, a swing stand. So mm. a child uh, who sits on it, or even an adult, because it'll take the weight of an adult, and it, it's a nice safe action, rather than the old style rocker, which tended to move around the house and take lumps out of the wall, out of the plaster work, or could go on your toe and break your toe. So this is a nice, safe, smooth action, you know. Mm. you know. Now, the horse itself, is it um, in proportion to a horse we'd see in a field, or mm. is it the kind of the modelly horse that we see either on uh, a merry-go-round or the old-fashioned uh, mm. uh, rocking horse that kids had that probably cost a couple of quid that they just yeah. walked back and forth. Yeah. They, it was a rocking horse, but he didn't yeah. look that much like a horse. Yeah. How much like a horse do yeah. your horses be? Yeah. They're quite realistic, uh, obviously uh, slightly out of proportion to a real horse because it has to be because, uh, because, of the, uh, because of the balance on the, on the stand. It has to be a certain, you know, you, you can't have the head out too far or it could tipple over, so you yeah. have to keep it in balance. But they are quite realistic. Um, and as I say, some people with, I've copied a couple of racehorses for, for different people and uh, I have one customer who gives them to their clients as, as gifts. Yeah. Uh, so uh, so I have to, they they have to be pretty pretty c close to the original. Mm. Otherwise, I I don't get the business. You know. Yeah. yeah. So people would have a racehorse and yeah. or a horse, not necessarily yeah. a racehorse. Yeah. Show jumper. Yeah. And would come up and say, Pat, yeah. I yeah. want you to make me a rocking horse. Yes. That looks like him. Yes, that's it. Exactly. Or yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But also the family pet horse, which could be. Uh, completely not a thoroughbred at all and I've done that as well just they're just a, a beloved pet who's maybe passed away and I would have to copy it from photographs that I've been given you know yeah. you know but the general the general uh, run of play is just people just like a standard rocking horse either c colored to me to, to match the furniture or or whatever yeah. or just colored that w what they might see in the workshop they might like it and ask me to make one similar yeah. to what they've seen and uh, and and people are very happy with that, you know. Mm. Yeah. Now, if we can leave the camera, now if we can leave the camera on Pat. Uh, now, in the background, if you look over the, the screen there, now um, that's obviously your, 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 the finished product. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, 
Now, the, the stand that's on, or the gliding, that looks like a feat of engineering in itself. Yeah, it's, uh, it's called a safety swing stand. So, uh, th as I say, the horse is nicely balanced on it. So you get a nice, safe uh, gliding action. And um, I've made them as well that way. People with autistic children, uh, when, they're, when they're actually sitting on that and gliding across, it, it, they become very calm and very, you know, happy within themselves. It's, a, it's, it's a, like, a, it's very therapeutic for them. Mm. For, for artistic children, yeah. but not only that, for, for all kids, they love it, yeah, they love and the, the action. Kids as well. Yeah, and adults, yeah, Now, absolutely. is it just sliding back and forth, ba or is there a little bit of up and down movement in it? Slightly up and down, yeah. As it glides, it, go it slightly goes back, you know, up a little bit at the back, mm. and then it slightly goes up slightly yeah. forward. But it's, it's a lovely action, it's very nice, and people enjoy it, yeah. you know, it's a nice action. Yeah. Now, absolutely magnificent looking uh, creation and fantastic product. Mm. Thank you. How do how do you find customers for them? That's the trick. Yeah. You, you kind of put huge effort into making them and yeah. all that. Yeah. But how do you find people yeah. uh, who, who are interested in them? Yeah. Uh, well, people go on the website and they, they, they go on the gallery page and, and they kind of mostly they like what they see so they'll give me a ring they'll okay ask me yeah the grand, but that's assuming yeah. that they've gotten as far as the gallery page yeah yeah but how do yeah. you get people to find you on the website yeah well uh, usually through uh, through doing the craft shows and that I do the odd craft show and people will come along and I give out my card quite a lot and they'll usually they wouldn't obviously buy on the day because it is a big commitment it's like mm. a so th they'll go home and have a think about it and they might ring me in a, in a couple of weeks or in a couple of months or whatever or coming up towards Christmas they might th think of me and give me a ring and ask me you know yeah to make one for them but uh, uh, people see it at craft show but it obviously yeah. it's a particular Let's, 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 not call, let's call it spade a spade. Yeah. They're expensive, yeah. beautiful pieces. So yeah. it's a certain yeah. type of customer with a few bob in their pocket. Yeah, usually it is uh, at the moment. Um, the, the prices start at three and a half thousand euro and go up to maybe five and a half, six thousand euro, depending mm. on the, 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 the size and the type of wood and the finish and what has to be done. And, you know, they can choose their own color for saddle cloths their own colour for the horse and their own horse hair colour. They can pick and choose all that. Yeah. Uh, so it all depends on that. Uh, so they, uh, they do w work out quite expensive, but in the long run, it's a great investment. And I personally don't think they're expensive for the amount of work that goes into it because it takes me maybe five to six weeks to carve one. Yeah. And then, uh, then the, the, the cost of the raw materials as well to make it and then the whole finishing process as well and the materials used and the lacquers and the varnishes and the paints and all the rest so i think it's quite a quite a good bargain now do you make them to order or have you got a showrooms at mm -hmm. the back of the workshop where yeah. people i i yeah you know, i suppose it's not the type of thing people ring you up get me a rocking horse handmade today you yeah know. no no i assume people yeah. do they have an input into what exactly they're looking for yeah yeah and usually they have a good long think about it and usually they'll come to me two or three times and have a look at what i have in the workshop and and have a and, and have a talk about what exactly they want and then give me the order mm -hmm. you know uh, so what i do in the workshop is i usually i'm usually working on a couple at any one time actually right now i'm working on two anyone's willing or anyone's welcome to come and, and take a look i'm working on two at the moment i'm working on a, a large dapple gray and a medium sized uh one in sycamore that i've that i have stained to a kind of a chestnutty color so they're, they're both quite attractive looking uh, rocking horses and everyone's welcome to come and take a look so you're working on two at the one mm. time yeah. Um, yeah and they're not for customers at the moment i'm just building up some stock because uh the reason being Usually, coming up to Christmas, people will ring me mm. and ask me, do I have anything available in yeah. stock? Yeah. And when you say people, mm -hmm. are your customers, are they horsey people for one? They can be, thing? yeah. Yeah, somehow I've made quite a few for horsey people. Yeah. But also... But not necessarily specifically. No, no, not specifically for horsey people. Uh, they're kind of, they're for everybody. In my opinion, they're for everybody who likes 
nice craftsmanship or would like to have a nice piece of Irish craft in their home. Yeah. That's the way I look at it. And just be very, very regular, ordinary people like me and you and everybody else, uh, some, some people will, they'll have a little few bob maybe in the bank to, to spare or they might save a few bob if they really want one. And the beauty of, of the rocking horse is, is uh, it's built to last for generations. And I hope in, in 100 or 200 years time, they'll still be used in the same family, handed down and handed down. Because despite all the innovations we have, there's mm -hmm. very little yeah. we can hand down. Exactly. You know, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. be it electronic goods, they're, yeah. they're, they're yeah. so, but e even toys for yeah. when we were kids. Yeah. You know, by the yeah. time, yeah. it's time to hand them on. It's just yeah. kind of all broken. So there's yeah. very few things we actually can hand yeah, down. Yeah, it's an old traditional craft. Uh, all the latest technology, which is absolutely fantastic, but it comes and goes uh, very quickly. You know, an o a wooden, solid wooden rocking horse yeah. will will go on for hundreds of years. Now we were saying there that, and people like to have a bit of Irish craft in yeah. their house. Uh -huh. So can we take it that it exports? People are coming from abroad to look at them as well. Uh, yes. Uh, I, now, at, uh, up to date, I've I've made a few that have gone to the UK mm. and I made one that went to France actually several years ago with the Kerry goat uh, well, did that yeah. around the <laughs> who's taking the yeah. horse to France yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe it was something like that <laughs> uh, but uh, I'd love to break into the American market Colin uh, mm. up to date I haven't because the carriage cost is a little prohibitive but I think if I get the right customer, they won't mind paying the extra little yeah. bit of carriage to get it that far. And I suppose the, the, when you think of money and when you think of equestrian uh, 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 people, we immediately think of the Middle East. Yeah. Um, you yeah. know, it, I'm sure it was something that would go down a bomb. If yeah. You're part, if you're yeah. part of my politically unsensitive yeah. terminology yeah. Yeah. there, yeah. it would be, uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, they, they, they would be snapped up. They yeah. have plenty of money they have. for what we were yeah. chatting earlier about, yeah. their toys. Yeah. Uh, and they also have a huge um, uh, yeah. interest in, in all things equine. Yes, yes. But yeah. I suppose the big question is, how do you break in to, to a market like like, yeah. like the Middle East? Yeah. Which brings us back to the likes of leader enterprise boards. Yeah. Are you getting assistance yeah. no, on that? No, uh, uh, well, the enterprise boards have kind of just been abolished now lately, so uh, it's very hard to get the funding for anything like that. But, but as you mentioned, the Middle East, uh, it just so happened that uh, uh, not so long ago, I made a rocking horse that went to the Qatar royal family, it went to their London residence for the latest addition to their family. Uh, the, the head of the Qatar royal family, who, uh, if I can think of his name again now off the top of my head, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Thani, I, I copied one of his own race horses and it was a gift to the latest addition to his family. Yeah. So he is, okay, based in London. From How did he find you? Did that come up in conversation? Yeah, yeah it was kind of a, a third party way. It wasn't, he, he didn't directly find me, but I do some, I do make some rocking horses for Coolmore Stud, who, ah, who, that's the, who had the, that's yeah. the Middle East connection. Da, and yeah, they yeah. give them to, they, they, they order them from time to time and they give them to their clients yeah. as gifts. Yeah, and yeah. I suppose when you think of cabin and when yeah. you think of uh, equine toy, you have to think of the cabin equestrian centre. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. The cabin equestrian centre is a great place. Mm. I actually, I, I've made a rocking horse for for Mervyn in the equestrian centre. I think he, I think he has it in his own house, and the, the grandkids come over and play on it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, the, it's a fine place to have a question and, 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 and some international people come over there. Yeah, as well. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and I plan to, to hopefully maybe take a stand at one of the fairs and maybe do some advertising at the, at the Cabinet Question Centre yeah. as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. um, again, we touched on it, but we kind of, yeah. we, we, we got sidetracked again. Um, fantastic Irish products. Everything about Ireland is in it, you yeah. know, the wood, yes. the equestria. So obviously uh, it, it would be a great export product, mm. but probably m myself, when it comes to exporting, you scratch your head ahead, you yeah. do you do these things? Yeah. Um, 
what, so we're not getting any assistance from any of the, the enterprise boards? Uh, no. Because uh, I know one of the things people have said, oh, Enterprise Ireland won't help us because we're not in an export business. Yeah, you see, I'm a small operator. I'm a one-man operator. A micro I'm a micro entrepreneur, if that's what you call it, or a, a, a one-man show. Or a that's, our, that's our new name, I'm by a the one way. Man we're we're, we're yeah. micro-enterprises. Okay, mi oh, micro sorry. Micro-enterprises. Micro it sounds a bit cooler, yeah. you know. <laughs> Well, one man's band makes it sound like Arthur Daly. <laughs> well, that's what I am—a micro, a micro enterprise. <laughs> micro enterprise. A micro enterprise column. Yeah, uh, yeah. I suppose Enterprise Ireland. I think you have to be a company with a certain amount of staff or whatever to get funding. Yeah. So, like, I'm a one-man enterprise. So I hope to sort of break into the American market yeah. myself. I have a couple of tricks up my sleeve through the website and through social media. Adv I'm going to start advertising through Facebook as well. Yeah. And uh, I have a Facebook page for my rocking horses. I hope to start advertising it, get more likes on it, get people interested in it, and maybe post up the latest uh, horses I make. Uh, yeah. And when I finish these two, I'll post them up and, and maybe hit the target audience I want in the demographics and in the, the countries I want to, mm. to, to, to advertise to. Yeah. So, and do you target things like the equine websites and our equine Facebook pages rather than waiting yeah. on them? Because you know yourself, I, I, I have a wonderful wheelchair, but very few people know where to find it. And yeah. it's, it's the you have to go out there and yeah. kind of say, look, yeah. Um, yeah. you know yeah. who would buy it. Yeah. You know who would have an interest. Yes. Uh, do you actively target that? Or is it like a, lo a lot of us micro entrepreneurs, there's not enough errors in the day? Yeah, I'd nearly need somebody to do that end of it for me. Yeah. And uh, I'm also look. I'm also going to do something about that. I'm actually, do, you know, I'm, I'm going to get somebody to help me with all that end of it as yeah. well. You know, so, you know, uh, it's very hard when you're working so many hours a day, th and then you have to fit all the rest of the yeah. stuff in. So, mm. but uh, I do plan on very very soon and having all that organized yeah on because we had somebody on a couple of weeks ago and like they were they were extolling the virtues of social media yeah. you know mm -hmm. but i said no don't do it when you come home in the evening you know yeah you find out the best time for your customer yeah. and do it three four times a day and yeah, I looked yeah. And, where do you get time three yeah. or four times a day yeah i know i'm in the middle of of carving this mm. horse's ear mm -hmm. but it's 11 o'clock and at 11 o'clock we tweet every it's 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 great in theory and it works for certain businesses. I was only talking to Roma there the other day. Said, yeah. Well, it's quite easy for me because yeah. well, what I do, yeah. I'm in front of a laptop yeah, eight yeah. hours a day. Yeah. So I schedule mm -hmm. fifteen minutes every couple of hours yeah. to stop what I'm doing and uh, to go from that section mm -hmm. of the computer to this. Yeah. Do, no doubt about it. Uh, social media is the way forward. Yeah. But it's getting the time. It's getting the time. I I actually did a little course on 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 Facebook. So. I'm a little bit uh, speaking of up uh, to speed. social media. I see on the screen there. If you want to tweet, tweet us. I won't say Twitter us. Tweet us is uh, at Cavan TV. Yeah, uh, sorry, Colin. Uh, yeah, I'm doing a little bit of social media, Facebooking. Yeah. Uh, I'm learning how to 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 use the Facebook ads, and uh, I do have another little side business as well. Maybe I'm not supposed to speak about you do. that. You do. I do Stay custom picture framing. And What's uh, custom picture framing? Uh, if custom picture framing is uh, framing anything from a jersey. Cavan uh, picture framing? Cavan picture framing, that's uh, me. Billboard sign yeah, around uh, Bud's Flowers. Yes. There that's you go, I've seen the yeah, sign, yeah, well done. Yeah, uh, thank you. Yeah, uh, I do custom framing. I, I frame uh, photographs, paintings, football, football jerseys, jerseys yeah, three-dimensional objects. Toys, teddy bears, yeah, mm -hmm. teddy bears, anything three-dimensional can be framed. Uh, of course, this just wouldn't have a glass, or would it? Uh, yes, it would have a glass. Yeah, oh yeah. There's a certain way of. Yeah, you <laughs> it's, have. It's yeah, you're, yeah. it's that thick. Ah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Or that deep, I should yes, say. it's quite yeah, deep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or there's another way of doing it. You can slope the back in, it, like bevel the sides yeah. in. It's a special way of doing it. It looks mm. pretty good. I actually did a, a piece this morning. That's going to be going into the Coot Hill Library for a uh, Scarecrow Week, a Scarecrow competition coming up. Well done. Yeah. Uh, so that uh, should be in the Coot Hill Library actually today. Mm. Yeah. So uh, between the two of them, mm -hmm. there's a living to be made there in, is. in wood. Yes, there is. You regret not doing woodwork in school. Was it not an option? 
No, it wasn't. Or, no, it was wasn't not, an option. Ah, yeah. There was just no the way option. you said it, I yeah. never did woodwork at school. I, should, I thought you were useless at it. No, but it was just it wasn't an option. It wasn't an option. Was you should have gone to my school. I, I did have. it, but I was useless at it. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, it wasn't an option. So maybe it was just as well. Mm. Well, yeah, 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 I might have, yeah, might have turned yeah. me off. <laughs> they might have have, have have taught you woodwork in a certain way. Yeah. That uh, and giving you skills yes. that would be absolutely useless. Yes, because as it's turned out, Colin, I, I have made rocking horses for carpenters, <laughs> for their fa for, for their families. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, how long does it take if I order one? Mm -hmm. How long? How long will it take? In other words, I'm thinking of Christmas. Yeah, uh, must be coming yeah. up to nearly close-off time for you, sure. Yeah, that, that's why I try to have a few sort of made up and ready to go. But if you wanted one in a specific finish and specific, you know, colourings and yeah. hair colouring and that, I'd need to have the order in kind of the middle of September, end of September. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Mm. Now you mentioned earlier you were doing, uh, you're, you're working on one at the moment yeah. in Sycamore. Mm -hmm. Does the wood make a difference? It does, yeah. Well, uh, probably or does the, the stain not make oak look like ash or ash look no. like oak? No, no, no. Oak will always stand out because the grain is absolutely beautiful in oak. It's probably the king of the woods. You know, it's the most expensive to buy in. So it's obviously, and it's the thickest and it's the heaviest, the hardest to carve wood. Mm. So it's kind of the, you know, it's the king of the woods. You know, yeah. and it has a beautiful grain. You know. Cherry is another wood with a beautiful grain. You don't have to stain cherry because it has a beautiful amber color naturally and, and it darkens itself over, over time mm. to a beautiful pattern, a beautiful sheen. Uh, ash has a lovely grain. You always can distinguish ash, you know, from you, you might be familiar with the hur all the hurleys are made with ash and it does have its own distinctive pattern. The beech is kind of more more of a generic looking wood so you can use beech and disguise it as other woods by putting stains yeah, into it yeah yeah so the beech would be the kind of the more economical wood to work with and for the end customer to buy yeah would be beech but having said that it's still a hard wood it's still solid it's it'll still last for 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 years hundreds of years mm. yeah uh -huh. And when it comes to varnishing, yeah. do, uh, brush or do you spray? No, brush. Brush. Yeah, brush it on. So it's a, it's a slow process. Yeah. Uh, when I'm finished the sanding, I put the, 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 the wood, the woods, wood, the wood dye. I use wood dye to, to mix the colours, put the wood dye on. And then I put a few coats of sealer on on top of that. And then I put three to four coats of varnish with a brush. Mm. And it gives a lovely, a lovely satin finish and I rub it down with a little bit of very very fine steel wool just to take some of the sheen off it just to give it a nice little gl nice glow so yeah, yeah yeah well Pat Bradley of Rocking Horse Ireland thank you very much for your time but before you go you might tell our viewers direct the camera how they can contact you and uh, how they can order thanks Colin well you can contact me directly through my website <laughs> which is rockinghorseireland.com or you could go to my Facebook page which is uh, www.facebook.com forward slash Rocking Horse Ireland. Or you could contact me directly. Uh, my phone number is 086 3752 779. And if you're living anywhere around Ireland, you can call to the workshop. Uh, just give me a ring before you call. But you're welcome anytime. Thank you. Pat Bradley of Rocking Horse Ireland, thank you for coming in to. Uh the show this week. Uh, you've been watching the Business Enterprise Show. I've been Colm Colgan. Talk to you next week. Goodbye.